Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be doing our species spotlight on our Drosera menziesii, which I spoke about in one of our previous videos until we got sidetracked by fungus gnat larvae. So, let's start the video. Welcome back to the fly trap garden. This channel is dedicated to the care and cultivation of carnivorous plants. So if you think you'd enjoy that, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any of our videos about carnivorous plants. In our last couple of videos, we spoke about our Drosera Adelaide seedling that had come up in our pot of pure sphagnum moss. Now, the issue that we encountered was that besides them going through a very difficult set of trials to actually be where they are right now, they now got fungus gnat larvae as well and obviously that's a really bad thing. So we had to make sure that we dealt with that before we were able to do our species spotlight on Drosera menziesii, which I did promise to you guys. And anyway, I checked up on the Drosera adelaide seedlings and they all seem okay. I could not see any more larvae busy walking around on top of the soil. So they may just be deep in the pot, but I do think that we were able to offset their hunger for a little bit and we will be reapplying the neem oil next week saturday as well so anyway let's start the video and here we go guys here is our tuberous drosera menziesii it's a robust form which means that it just grows super quick super strong super healthy and you can obviously see how healthy this little plant of ours is you may be able to tell here that their little traps are basically like little starbursts i really really love it they literally just look like a little explosion with little flares coming out of the center and i really like how that looks because it's super super interesting super round and these traps are quite big these traps are about this trap here in the center of the screen is about 80 millimeters so nearly a centimeter in um in length so it shows that the traps are pretty big compared to the other ones that we've had so far which are about two-thirds of the size of this one and that just means that we can watch these traps eat bugs much easier simply because we can use bigger bugs and also because their traps are obviously bigger and we will be feeding this guy at the end of the video so make sure that you stay for the rest of the video until we do a time lapse of that this species is endemic to western australia just like most of our tuberous drosera although some of the tuberous drosera you can actually find in southern australia in victoria new south wales um, New Zealand too and I'm not very sure about Queensland but I'm sure you may get a couple up in Queensland um, simply because there are some cooler patches in Queensland so I'm pretty sure it's possible. This is a tuberous drosera as I've said and it grows in a super super long pot. About this length at this height of the pot they have their tuber from there below is all roots and from there upwards is these super long dark red stolons and now I don't think we have any other plant in our collection that is this dark red maroon color. It's super super cool because if you look focus on this stone on here, from the front it's very dark red, but when I turn it, it's now green. How interesting is that? And I think that the reason why they're so dark red like this is because the, the dark red maroon portion of the plant is facing north so that side obviously gets the most sunlight um, and the other side is obviously south facing so i think that the super dark red maroon coloration is, a, is obviously shown up when they're still young like this one here but it obviously gets ex accentuated the older they get so obviously when this one was this size sprout it was all dark red but obviously over time it only moved the dark red pigment to the north facing side and obviously keeps this lighter green yellowish color at the back which is super interesting it's a two-tone plant so that's super super cool let's talk about their height right now it is being told that in cultivation these plants at the end of the growth season can get up to 30 centimeters in height which is obviously when they are fully developed and mature plants um our pot is about 18 centimeters so they'll obviously get taller in the pot right now our tallest menziesia sprout is six centimeters in height which is just about two and a half inches. And let's double check the length of the 
trap. You can see the traps. It's about one centimeter in length across, which is just under half an inch for the Americans. It just shows just how big these traps are. They really are very big traps. I can easily tell between all the other traps that we have right now. But this guy's literally the biggest that we have. Now this Drosera menzisii, I've actually tried to grow menzisii before in the past. When I was living in South Africa, I ordered some menzisii tubers from someone in Germany, I think it was. Uh, it doesn't really matter anywhere in, in Europe, really. And they arrived, but they took so long to get to us. By the time they got to us, I think they had desiccated a little bit. Now, the, this is quite a big issue in cultivation because these guys, tuberous drosera, are winter growing plants. So they will only send up their little stolons, obviously, in winter time. And the reason that is, is because in winter time, in Western Australia and the other southern parts of Australia is when they get most of their rains if I'm not mistaken so they obviously start growing in winter when they have rain and access to water and obviously the cooler temperatures too. I got my plants and because of this winter growing season thing that I've been explaining they obviously weren't used to the environment um, that I was in because you may or may not know this but the northern hemisphere has winter when the southern hemisphere has summer and I got these guys just before summertime so obviously they started to sprout in the northern hemisphere but in the southern hemisphere it was starting to become summer which is obviously when they don't want to grow but anyway I got them I put them in a pot of silica sand and some sieved peat at a ratio of two is to one and I put them in there and I gave them a little bit of water and fortunately guys nothing happened they just desiccated and then come winter time I opened up the pot and I dug around and I found dried up tuber remains. And that was the end of our Drosera menzisii and tuberous Drosera exploration, I guess, in South Africa. And I never tried again because by then I had decided I would leave the country. So never actually got around to getting some more tuberous Drosera there. But as you can tell, we've got them here in Australia and they grow super, super well if you're able to keep them growing when they're supposed to be growing. These guys weren't the first tuberous Drosera to come up. I think they were actually about the fourth or the fifth one to come up. We had our Drosera macranthus coming up and we had Drosera andersoniana. Uh, or Andersonia, I think it is. They all came up right before this guy did, and I was actually quite worried that this one might not sprout, but obviously you just have to give them some more time, let the cooler temperatures come in. Every single one of our nights right now are less than eight degrees Celsius, which is perfect for germinating seedlings. And actually talking about seedlings, we have a new Drosera, tuberous Drosera seedling sprout coming up. Forgotten which species it is, but now we have half of our seeds coming up, and that means that we will be moving all of our tuberous Drosera seedlings outside so that they can all grow in the sunlight. I wanted at least half of them to, you know, start sprouting before we moved that whole collection into the sun, just so that we could make sure there was good germination before I exposed them to potential rains and whatnot. So anyway, this guy came up a little bit late, but as you can see, he's grown super, super quick. He's one of the top four tallest Drosera we have right now. I think this one is actually the third or... Let me actually go double check. Yeah, I was actually wrong. This is our fifth tallest um, tuberous Drosera right now. We have obviously the Macranthus, Aramae, and Pallida that are much taller than the Menzisi are right now. But none of them are as robust as these guys. Look at how strong their stolons are above the ground. Super, super strong. The Pallida, as you guys may remember or seen in some of our previous videos, they're like so super floppy. They fall on top of themselves, they stick to each other, but they are kind of scrambling plants that like to grow up and on top of things to get some nice height. And I guess if you put so much energy into a, a strong stolon, you're gonna waste your time, especially since they only have the winter time to grow, which is not very long. At max, it's obviously six months. So they only have six months to really grow. So obviously the scram, the grab and scramble technique is obviously much more advantageous for them. So they can just climb up as high as they can to get as many insects as they can. But these guys obviously have much stronger rhizomes, or stolons, sorry. Much stronger stolons sticking up out the ground and they are much tougher than the other ones and you know there's nothing wrong with that i actually prefer them when they don't fall on top of everything and stick to each other because it becomes quite a big mess and annoying to look at them individually you know we have our our cage around them sometimes they stick onto the cage and then if i'm opening up the cage i don't want to damage them because you know obviously they're stuck onto it i don't want to pull too hard so it gets kind of annoying but it's all right we rearrange them all together so they all have some space between them some smaller growers between them as well i've spoken enough about these guys their care is 
simple just like every other tuberous drosera they obviously they grow in winter they pre prefer rainwater reverse osmosis water distilled water and their medium is as i said as well two parts sand to one part peat this helps them to grow in the soil which is less waterlogged because a waterlogged soil will kill them although i have seen videos of them growing in tons and tons of water and these videos come to me through one of our subscribers, Wretched Davian, who, is, who has tons of little clips on his channel of all the different tuberous drosera. And you guys should really go check them out. They're super, super interesting videos. Anyway, guys, let's go get a little bit of a, an insect for this trap over here. Yeah, there's none of these other traps are really as big as this one here. So let me go get the insect and set up the camera. Okay guys, as you can see, we're running out of daylight and probably battery too. It's been an hour of recording and as you can tell, I put three insects. And the reason for that is because I put one and then it wouldn't move. So I was like, you know, oh damn, I killed it. So then I put another one and I was like, okay, this one's gotta be alive because it was moving when I put it on and then it just stopped moving. So then I was like, okay, let me put this last one on and make sure not to even get it between the tweezers and obviously that one, they're running around everywhere. But they all move every now and then, but yeah, anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed that um if you enjoy this type of content remember to leave a like and in our next video we will be moving all of our tuberous seedlings outside as well so make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of that so thank you guys see you next time